Welcome, everybody, to the Onward VR Master League Season 12 debut. My name is Nightfire with two E's. I am your sole host for today's intense matchup between two teams that have been around for a little bit, VR Loyal Dogs and Pickles. And geez, it just feel, feels, feels like it has been a long time since I have hopped into an Onward match to cast. I am really stoked to be here this season. Season 12, gonna be super hyped to be a part of. Tons of new players coming in, lots of new teams, but also rebranded ones. And I think one thing we gotta mention right out the gate here is that Pickles is a rebranded team for the most part. Bursek was their previous team name. They have since adopted Pickles. They've also added uh one new player by the name of durafin uh coming in uh story uh history with silent purge and the five horsemen back in season nine but returning here to join the roster of pickles uh the rest standard uh bursek the bursek roster blind dog jelly bee sir codel and vladich uh and then over on loyal dogs the you know this team been around for several seasons they have I'm Donnie, Agueco, Hekini, Hilm Gary, Oxers, and Jolk. And so we are going to see two teams that have participated in uh, the VRML for a good while duke it out here today. It should be a, like I said, super hype back and forth uh, that I'm very much looking forward to to get into. It's going to be a great way to kick off the start of this season and we do have almost uh both teams ready to rock just waiting on the final member from vr loyal dogs but a shout out to everyone that is hanging out here and is tuning in for the first cast of the season i do appreciate everyone that is stopping by one thing you may have noticed in the announcement for season 12 is that we do have an initial prize pool in the past we have waited till closer towards tournament time to announce our prize pool one of the new things we're going to be trying to do this season is build a prize pool from start of season to end. So you can't expect that initial prize pool of $5,000 to grow over the course of this season as we secure more sponsorships and uh, confirm more sponsors for the season. Uh, it'll be a great way to sort of hype up that prize pool that ultimately all these teams are going to be competing for. We take the top eight teams and... Uh, worldwide and put them up in a bracket at the end of the season the winners come out with some pretty hardy prizing obviously that prize pool uh, dictating how much each team will get but it's gonna be super exciting to tune in throughout season 12 and see who is going to be at the top of the top right now we're gonna dive into the first game of the season it is vr loyal dogs versus pickles into the action. We go. And of course, we are off to the races with a north spawn. Not going to be utilized out the gate. You can get very aggressive up in the L here. But we're not seeing really any uh, overcommitment from the likes of Pickles. They're not diving out here yet. Sir Kotal is making a slow approach, but. He'll end up tucking into that dark corner, trying to blend in. Maybe even knife Donnie once they come down. I'll have to keep an eye on this lane throughout the course of the round. The rest of the team, however, is making their way ooh, up through the south. And I feel like I haven't seen a hard commit to this south push in a while. It is a little bit risky, simply because a defender can perch themselves up on the stairs. But with this objective, that's not going to be the case. No one's going to commit too far out and so oil dogs should be able to make their way up the south stairs and eventually challenge durafin who is positioned to defend i'm just kind of taking an overall stock yet yet at the shiver of the defense they are heavily favoring securing the underground entry tunnel which is this tunnel here they've committed vladik and blind dog to watching this lane when you will blind when dog you is also able to watch center but ultimately they have a very weak coverage of where hecking is pushing through here Oof, 
to turn that volume down. <laughs> Apologies for the loud audio. Should be fixed. Guard your ears. But this is the weak point here. This is this. This is a great entry for loyal dogs to be making, and they're checking every corner. You can see the flash here into this common L. They're also concerned about the dark corner here. A lot of angles that they have to be monitoring. In addition, we do have this push coming in from I'm Donnie, and he finds Kodo. I think that was just blind fire into the corner just to see if anybody was there, but it ends up finding a kill. And again, the on-objective defense weakens. Blind Dog tosses the flash. Donnie finds that. There is a good C4 explosive. Detonated down in the kind. Jelly finding the confirm. At least putting a pause in this push. There's a good kill from Durfin. Up through the center. Rotations coming in, though, on the back side. And Jolk... May have an open objective. Durifin finds one. There is still Gweko there. Gweko's down as well. Still resible. But I wonder if Jolk is going to drop back and try and pick up this res. But currently, both Durifin and Jellybee tucking back into defensive positions. Again, I wonder what Jolk's uh, stance is going to be here. I don't think he has... not seeing any utility to pillage off of his down teammate here. But I do think he has a smoke or two on his vest, so... A well-placed smoke could deny vision from Jelly, force the rotation from Durafin. Just wonder how Jolk is going to try and execute on this corner. Now both watching from this angle. And Jolk does hear all of this. You can hear the comms of Jelly B. Jelly is dialed into this corner, though. It's a super risky corner to peek. Texas Tower sees that what is one is resible. Maybe they'll commit back to trying to pick up Guaco, but this is going to be. They're going to go for that res. They have to go soon. Once you're downed, you're only down for about two minutes. Then you bleed out. And so, Gweko has been down for quite some time. Jolk's probably running into the tail end of that time that he can be rezzed. And yeah, it looks like Jolk is going to commit back trying to pick up this res. There is technically a decent bit to clear, but he should be able to rely on the comms of his teammate knowing that nobody is here. I wonder if Jolk is going to res him because he's not hearing any return voice from his teammate here. Usually ask, are you alive? And they'll respond. I wonder what the case is here. Either way, Jolk almost getting ID'd by Durapin on the corner there. And now he bleeds out. So no longer is that res available. Jolk has rotated. Maybe here he'll be able to actually find some more utility. You can see he's looking for it. I guess a syringe. Now he's going to go back for the res, but it is too late. That syringe not going to be able to get used. And he's really spending a lot of time here. Durfin could come out for another check and have Jolk dead. And I think Jolk did just check his tablet. No, he doesn't have the tablet, though. He went to go put it back on his back, and he dropped it back there. So if he comes into a cap opportunity, he is not going to be able to execute on it. He has to go for the full kills. Durfin should hear these footsteps. A trade on the corner leaves Jelly B alive. And we are in to a final player left alive for round one of season 12. Certainly an exciting kickoff. And Pickles, nonetheless, taking it. Set up, uh, set up the stage here as I did not have time to do so. The bands coming in from VR Loyal Dogs, abandoned, and from Pickles Sand, both getting banned out. Map one obviously is Subway, and we are underway into the series.
keep everything up to date. So now we can see what loyal dogs do on their defensive rotation, what kind of setups they go for. Again, oftentimes you see a bit more commitment in players to this lane to deny the uh, offense from being able to take control. If you can take control of this lane, you're just so dangerously close. Oh, I guess you can't see it. You're so, you're, you're so dangerously close. To the objective, oftentimes you have players invest defending inside there, invest in defending in the corners, even sometimes trying to peek out early to defend against a quick south rush, which could be possible for the likes of Pickles with this spawn point. Durfen's going to be the one to check out the gate. Oh, he's going to continue to get aggressive. Could very well run into hi, I'm Gary. Yeah, yeah. I think it's Gaudy. That's how you say the A with the umlauts. I don't know. Someone in chat can help me out. How do you say the A with the umlauts? But as we do see here, uh, Guiko is go go. I don't know. Help me on that one too. I'm gonna go with we go go. I don't know what I'm gonna go with. I might just go with Echo. <laughs> Either way. Set up inside that dark corner, and I do got to wonder if, if there is any C4 placement position throughout here. Oh, there's Vladik getting scooped up. Durfin passing high, I'm Gary's position, and then maybe giving a false sense of comfort to his team that that whole lane was clear. Certainly was not. You can see now Durfin is rechecking this lane. Curious how his teammate died. To a bit of a holding pattern here. The rest of the offense swinging their way up around through the north side. You can see some utility coming here. I wonder if this will draw the attention. It will at least of uh, Hakain here. Oh, and these are some good smokes. Flair's perfectly pushing Hakain out from his position. He's trying to relocate that smoke, trying to find it in the ground and move it. I don't think he can find it though, and that's his spot basically nullified, so he's no longer watching the corner, and there's a long range nade to follow up the smoke. It kind of goes down. And no push coming through, but it certainly is causing a bit of a stir. Nades coming through. He's fully rotated off of his position, and now Blind Dog is coming crashing in. What goes back, exposed, down he goes. Hakai's number two on the hit list as the suppressive fire comes flying through the smoke. Jelly B, making his entry, and the push takes a pause as Pickles just set up again for the attack. He tries to rotate. Dog catches him out. Dog and Gary are the last two defenders. Jelly might have an angle here. He does. Jelly finds one. Looking for Gary in the back corner. Actually, tablet out. Does Gary spot this? Yes, a huge pickup there. One goes down. Another goes down. Gary could clutch the round here. The final defender, Blind Dog, tucked into the corner. And here comes Blind Dog pushing out Gary. With a massive free kill clutch. And at the end of the day, five and one after two rounds. Keeps this game close and tied, but again, we come down to one survivor on the map. And uh, <laughs> I'm happy, Camper. This is a great way to start this season. This is a fantastic bit of back and forth. Love to see this kind of a close match right at the start of Season 12. It's a good omen, I think. Where we go from here is the question. As we are done with two rounds, we change objectives.
The Our Loyal Dogs go back on the attack. Pickles go back on the defense. And we do head on over to this all ever exciting north objective. Plenty of different ways to defend it, but at the end of the day, you must have coverage of this wall. If you lose coverage of this lane and this wall, you can be kept on around the corner. And so all sorts of interesting strats come out here on defense. I'd be very intrigued to see what pickles throw out as they did have a bit more of a passive setup for the um, market objective. I wonder if a passive setup will work here. Oftentimes you'll see defense commit all the way up to the stairs. Up into round three, we'll see what pickles commit to. At the very least, they are going to send two here to this side. And they will find a lack of action. No offense pushing in from this north side. But utility and uh, points being spent here. Flash is coming up and over. Vladek actually finds the first kill by getting very aggressive up on the catwalk. A nice pickup out the gate. The question is, will he be ready for Jolk? Who's positioned Order also at the stairs. Vladek comes charging in. Jolk can't find the angle. I think Vladek could be hearing these footsteps from Jolk. Either way, he's definitely throwing off this loyal dog's offense just by disrupting and now defending this catwalk entry. Jolk can't come down, can't get control of the stairs and reinforce through the center. It does weaken the push that Gwekko's trying to make as they don't have support, but Donnie's actually coming up from the stairs, and they should have pretty good control of the south. As it is relatively uncontested. The only other defender, Durafin, who is in an interesting spot. Only a place that he can take if he knows that that catwalk is defended. He can sit here halfway through the stairs, and I think he spotted out Donnie. Definitely has eyes dialed in there. Glad I up some smokes. Oh, Jolk actually dove through the smoke down the slayers. Vladek misses the shots. Pistol comes out. Hits him once. Jolk, his gun's not working. Something's happening to Jolk. And the knife comes out. Maybe the dog getting into the play space. Who knows? But Jolk goes down. Durafin finds another. And it's all up to Gary and Gwekko. I see the clamor for predictions. Nice pick up there from Durfin and off the back of another kill in the north cuts down the final two defenders as I get predictions up. You can enter into those predictions, although now that should be closed as I speak. Pickles lock in round number two. And again, take the lead. I started off with the lead. Kicking off that round one, but... So far, we've just been trading Volk rounds. And again, as we go back to the north for VR Loyal Dogs turn at defending, it'd be kind of interesting to see what their setup looks like. If Pickles do decide to attack up through the north, that'll be also an interesting question. Either way, into the action we are. This is certainly a great series delivering. 
I wonder if, since Low Dogs attacked from the south, I wonder if they'll invest in defending this sort of south side. You can commit one or two uh, deep into the south to defend if you want, but it is a risk to take that and push out, because if you're too far south, then you can actually have attackers come up through the center from basement and wreak havoc, and so oftentimes the line that has to be crossed is the final train track where most defenders sit and then a few up in the north to make sure that they don't lose control of the wall so I imagine we'll see a pretty standard setup here from VR Loyal Dogs as they go on that defense taking a quick gander at the KD's Durafin 6 and 2 definitely coming alive uh, this series getting a good bunch of kills Pickles feeling good about that Durafin pickup, I'm sure. <laughs> or a, or Bursek, the formerly known as Bursek. And Loyal Dogs. Uh, hi, I'm Gary. Not finding any kills last round. But still, 5-2. and two. Donnie up there, 3-4, and four, but... One difference I'm seeing here after that round is... A bit more kills on the board. See if Loyal Dogs... I don't think they lost a single one on defense. We'll see if Loyal Dogs can mimic that sort of success. We do hop in to our next round. Round four of map one. Again, a shout out to everyone tuning in, hanging out. We really do appreciate everyone stopping by to catch the first game of the season. If you're not aware, this is the Onward VR Master League. This is a competitive VR esports league. Five versus five military simulator, but we also have leagues for other VR games. You can find out more at VRML.com. You can see all of the available leagues and register, join a league. You can join the Onward League right now. It's the start of season 12, and you can join at any point. You can find a team that's recruiting. You can make your own. It is a all-inclusive community run league so if you are interested in playing i do recommend checking it out c4 tossed up onto the ceiling here but they are not going to commit to an early sort of defensive setup like we saw from pickles and counter to that pickles are investing what seems to be a few in a late push turf and blind dog and jelly all waiting for utility to come even vladic may swing to the north, but I think he's more set up to go through the catwalk to take control of the stairs. These three are most likely to push up through this north lane. Try and wreak some sort of havoc down the stairs while the rest of the team converges through that catwalk. But we'll have to wait and see. It could also mean that they are just almost playing a passive offense and that they will eventually then drop to the south. A lot of options, uh, but Pickles are slowly advancing forward. In the meanwhile, Gary taking an interesting position there against the wall. And... A bit of an aggressive defense here. Loyal Dogs looking for picks out through the center. Donnie in particular set up there. Jolk watching the catwalk. But like I said, most oftentimes you see teams just trying to cut off one lane instead of surveying the entire field. It does expose you to multiple angles. A real push from multiple angles here, though. The dominating side here is going to be the North Pickles investing heavily in pushing this. That nade tossed down and detonated the C4, so that can no longer be a threat. And it really is just Gauko holding this wall. If they crash with smokes or even two attackers, there's a chance that he could yeah. go down. Another nade tossed to catch anyone that's tucked into the tight corner. And any other C4. One thing they could do here for Loyal Dogs is send one up through the catwalk to try and start a flank, but they have to do it now. This push from Pickles is going to be coming through any second. Always 
good to see players return after taking a bit of a break. Durifin, one of those players. As mentioned in the chat, doing great. Coming back from his hiatus, I completely agree. Really playing some good onward right now, and sending out that suppressive fire is Durifin as well. Sir Kotal trying to make an entry from the south. If anything, it's a distraction. Does draw Gary's attention and really, again, just leaves this defense up to Gauko. We're just going to stay here on this angle because this is where the push is going to be coming through. Hop up to Durifin, okay, see his view. Fire him, free fire him. Nice, Gary taking shots on the corner. Durifin with the rebuttal. Gauko still not taking shots, sitting deep in the back as Durifin suppresses their advance forward. Jelly comes crashing down and shots do ring on the edge of Gauko. A nice nade around the corner, catching down. Jelly B. Durifin suppresses down Gauko. Gary is the only one defending on the corner. He needs all of his defense to come crashing around here. The revive on to Jelly. They have full control of this corner, and you can see here come all of Loyal Dogs. They have to full sprint here. Jelly B pad out, punching in the code. This could be map one in the hands of Pickles. A great shot over the top of Jelly B. Another one goes down in Pickles. With a great bit of teamwork. Debut with a cap to lock in map one in their first map ever played in the VRML. Granted, of course, it is a rebrand of Bursec, but a new team with a few new players like Durfin. Clearly being a key element. Eight and two there. But that's a cap. Locked in from Pickles. Puts them up 4-1. And we are now headed to map two. This is going to be, as you can see, Quarantine. One I always love to see played. I feel like I haven't popped into Quarantine in a long while. That's where we're headed for map two. Oil Dogs picking up the defense. To start off this round, Pickles on offense. If you're not familiar with the format of the VRML, the home team, which in this case is Loyal Dogs, gets to ban a map first. Pickles then ban a map. Then Loyal Dogs pick a map or side that they will start on, in which case Loyal Dogs picked Subway. And now for map two, Pickles have picked Quarantine. Oftentimes, after a team has picked the map, uh, they tend to go to Marsak. Uh, the opposing team gets to pick side, and, and very rarely does a team not choose to be on Volk. Uh, Volk is the defending team, and so if you start defending and you trade defensive rounds every round, you will end up winning the series 4-3, to because uh, it is a best of seven. And so... There is that uh, a, a, a peered advantage uh, that a lot of people take. And some teams excel on, a, on offense. And so some teams do choose to start offense in some scenarios, depending on the map and what the map one scoreline was like. In this case, again, Pickles have picked the map and Loyal Dogs have chosen to start on defense. And that's the whole story. Not seeing any subs come in. Another sort of uh, pro tip is that oftentimes teams hold more than five players. Although you can only have five in a, in a lobby at a time, it is good to have up to eight players on your roster so that you can have some players that excel on, su on certain maps, excel uh, with long-range guns or short-range guns or C4 plays, and utilize those specific players for their specific expertise in this case i'm not seeing any of that here everyone from pickles back in the roster loyal dogs may be going with the sub as we are waiting for the fifth now to pop in although they did have five that that it did not include a sub maybe they'll bring one in here try and change something up after a one to four loss off the back of a tough cap and again shows kind of a risk in their defense uh, of having only one really covering that wall. It's much harder to crash and re-take that corner than it is to defend it, in my opinion. Although, if you had the proper utility, they certainly could have denied it. A couple of nades on the corner would have gotten the job done.
I also will try and get predictions out right about now if I time everything correctly. And so be sure to get your predictions in. Who you think will come out on top? We are still mulling around more use cases for the channel points. One of those use cases may be to be able to request a cast of one of your matches for your team. If we end up enabling something like that, we may also have to do a reset on channel points. Set a even floor. Kick off season 12. But we will see. We haven't decided on anything like that just yet. More of a mod level decision anyway. And so, uh... May end up doing something along those lines with those channel points that you are wagering. Let's see... No official timeout coming through just yet. So I don't know if it's a full technical pause here. But again, we are just waiting for that fifth of loyal dogs, and then we'll kick off round two. And like I said, a shout out to our current sponsors, VRML, Pro2 VR, and HyperX. Love to see the... Uh, return of obviously those two sponsors we should i would imagine see others that you're familiar with adding to that sponsor prize pool soon enough i don't even know if hyperx has been officially added so that 5,000 prize pool that has been announced at the start of this season is definitely prone to go up already and so pretty hype stuff we ultimately competing for a nice chunk of change in a game that everybody loves and there is the sub. Took a little bit of time. Maybe they had to wake him up or break him out of a private lobby. Who knows? Either way, Oxers has entered the stage for VR Loyal Dogs. Will be the sub and fifth for Loyal Dogs. And so I imagine we will be underway on map two shortly. Let me assign the points. Pickles locking in that W off the cap. Now we will add another prediction. Still haven't dropped into the match, so don't worry. We're not missing any action. There it is. Everyone in and ready. That said, should be popping into the action at any stage here. There is the start. We are diving in. Round number one of map two of the first series of season 12. It's certainly been an exciting matchup so far. A great bit of back and forth in round one despite the score line. The initial rounds going down to the wire, 1-1, one, 2-1, one, one, and then the cap to really throw the odds out of whack. By the way, Pickles coming off of a solid W on map one. Definitely have some momentum to ride into this second map, and I wonder if they're going to get aggressive, look for some sort of cap opportunity. With this objective, it's certainly possible. For now, we're on board Jelly B as they push forward. Oh, what the heck? Oh, no. I, uh, I didn't mean those. Loyal Dogs seem to try and reset way too late. They lost one at the spawn. And this is going to be an easy round of the hand of pickles. The trouble now is Akain has to defend alone. He's lost his whole team in their attempts to reset the round and, oh. 
they realized way too late. And uh, thankfully, Hakain didn't kill himself. If Hakain had also executed themselves with a knife, it would have been two points instantly to the hands of Pickles. Either way. Since they did not reset before that official round time where you're available to, they do have to play out the round, and the score should be what the score is, the unfortunate reality of technical issues. We do have rules around it, but just did not reset in time, and so a 5v1 right now for Pickles. They don't even know it. And it seemed to me like maybe even a miscommunication because they had one commit suicide, one died to shots. And Blind Dog finds the final kill to get Pickles the Full round. Choice. Now, of course, there is uh, the possibility that Pickles allow a reset and score. And we replay the round, but I don't think that is going to happen unless I'm otherwise informed. The score is the score. Round one, locked in by Pickles, and they continue to lead the series with an early lead here in map number two. And again, there is a 15 second timer at the start of a round where you can reset without punishment, and it resets the entire round. It's built into the game. So the rules are built around that mechanic, and yeah, I, I just I don't think they went for that reset attempt soon enough. We do have all five back for loyal dogs, though, and so maybe they can muster up an attack of their own. Definitely not how you want to kick off quarantine with your fresh sub and feeling like you could really do some damage on a new map. One that you picked. But, uh, yeah, not the case there. And, yep. We are underway for round two. A rough start for Loyal Dogs. Let's see if they can bounce back and lock in here for this next round. A lot of communication early. About what, vale, but a lot of communication, and that's one thing that I always do like to talk about the comms, an ever important element in a top tier onward team. Already, shots coming in, trying to deny that cross, but already, but one has gotten across. Durafin has managed to dive out, and he is all pushing up here, looking for some early kills. Hi, I'm Gary, has to be cautious. Durafin takes the shot, and misses. Gary tucks back in. Griffin's been shooting well all see well, at least for map one, but shots there finds Galco. It goes down to that. Minus again, put the shot in my unit. Trying to get rid of Durfin here. Nice nade toss. That's a good flash. Gary completely blind goes prone into the corner and Durfin pushes forward. Takes some shots from their right and has more information now. Knows Donnie. Potentially swinging in. Durafin comes on an awkward angle towards Gary. Gary still, though, ready and waiting. Trades. Durafin resible. Loyal dogs down to two. <laughs> Another trade. I'm Donnie, the sole survivor in a 1v3 attempt. And really, he does have to just attack objective now. The last three defenders are around OBJ. Doesn't have to worry about any of their edges. They don't know that, but... They can push straight forward up to the objective, completely uncontested. It's a matter of getting to the objective, though, that becomes a bit of a challenge with both Kotal and Jelly B on flexible defensive positions. They can move around as they are. This could be dangerous, though, crossing the street so late, going for the res on the Durafin.
Oh, he may be able to get this res. It does look like Donnie is kind of keyed in. But uh, is dropping off the angle, and Jelly is going to be able to get this res. Durafin back up. Now, with those shots coming out from Donnie, he's almost kind of given away his position. So it could be an aggressive defense now. If they have an accurate kill count, they can push this soul attacker. Just Donnie. Scanning and hunting. Durf unfortunate that he did not go down. He was just barely... There's a slice there of that window that is not a window. Donnie gonna swing north. Bad idea. Going around Durf and... I wonder if that's Donnie? I think we're bugged. Maybe? And we're hearing the dead audio of his teammates come through his mic. Because Donnie's definitely alone here, and I don't imagine he's communicating or anybody else communicating to them. Jelly catches out. Donnie trying to cross there, and loyal dogs go down. Pickles up 2-0 out the gate off of a tough start, but nonetheless a solid defense there. And they are a danger close to securing this series. We, of course, play the third map out. The score lines are really what matter. The rounds won. At the end of the day, the matchmaking system determines how much you go up or down in matchmaking rating based off of how much you won by. If you win heavily, three maps in a row, 4-0, you get the most amount of points you can and go up in rank. If you win a map 8-9, you will get less points than if you won 12-0. That's the general gist of it. So, that third map is important because if Pickles or Loyal Dog, if Loyal Dogs do end up losing here and can win that third map, they will then reduce how much MMR they lose. They will lose less MMR if they can win that third map. So, still always something to compete for in, a, in, the, in these three map series. I'm curious to see Maybe if Loyal Dogs can bounce back. Not counting them out yet. 2-0 lead for Pickles, and we go to a center courtyard objective. Not an easy one to attack, in my opinion, simply because there's not really any angles to hide behind to cap the objective. You have to do it under smoke if you're going to do it. So I got to wonder if they will go for that cap, what kind of defense Loyal Dogs set up with. We'll find out as we dive into round number three, map two. Early cross on the street does get them across undetected. Not up in the north, though. A trade right out the gate. Jelly B pushing forward and out. Catches one over in the north. Jelly can be rezzed, but... Oh, so can Donnie. Not any longer. Sercoto pops around, confirms that kill. Vladik revives Jelly. Pickles managed to take one for O. Oh. Blind Dog finds one scooped up by Gauko off the back, and Gauko now has to go try and pick up that res. Odo still covering north and not being pushed. We are equalized. Really down to the even available res. 
North pretty much cleared as Vladik has gone down. Jelly can scoop them up. All three back up on the north to continue their push. Oxer is still a potential threat to that north side. As they are hunting for any advanced push onto the corners or up onto the rooftop. They may even get more aggressive and push out. Seems like their plan is. This is a risky push. Really has to trust in his team that there's no one pushing in from that side. And oh, I wonder if Jelly has heard these footsteps or if they'll even check this corner. It's a bit of an awkward corner to have to check once you peek here. And they do check. Down goes Oxers. Revive comes through, though, and... Pickles find one and res one. I oh, know, look at the rest came from, yeah. Kalko there. Kotal waiting for it to happen, seemingly, though. Fine, that kill. Oil Dogs down to two. Pickles playing a very good game here. I have to wonder if they're thinking cap and locking in this map, too. Hiking goes down. Hakain goes down. Hi, I'm Gotti. He's the only one left. He's being suppressed. Jelly B slowly crawling their way up to the corner. Yeah, they have to be thinking cap attempt here. With that smoke out, Gary has to almost put rounds into it. A good swing there catches Jelly. Here he is basically on the most important spot he can be. Should be able to deny the cap. Yeah, they almost commit out into the fire to die instead of allow the cap. One point to Pickles. We still have at least another round here on map two. Do see some talk about mics. You see here, I'm using the HyperX Quadcast S RGB mic. I like it a lot. I think it sounds fantastic. The RGB works very well. It's an easy app that you download and you can control all the colors. Um, I've had this mic now for, gosh, I think over maybe a year now. Yeah, or at least approaching a year and I've had no issues. Worked great. I swapped it back and forth between both my stream and gaming PC. Uh, I definitely recommend the HyperX product line. I mean, across the board, I've got the HyperX uh, keyboard I use for casting. I would really enjoy that RGB. I got the uh, ultra light mouse for smooth camera work. Yeah, it's, it's there. The HyperX provides great products and we are always, uh, have always been and are super proud to have them as a sponsor for VRML. Back into the action we go, though. Enough time chewed away as these teams can mull over their strategy between rounds. Oil Dogs definitely thinking about what they're going to do here to bounce back from this 3-0 deficit. Curious to see what kind of strat they roll out, what kind of pushes they put up. Probably going to run into some action early in the north. Do you see Blind Dog and another posed to clash with Hakine and Oxers? And all these shots come in and Oxers <laughs> finds <laughs> first blood in, in round four. Griffin finding some shots up there towards the center, but no success. Another kill comes through this time from Vladek, a rebound onto Oxers. Still another here, though, and Vladek is going to commit out into the courtyard. Doesn't get shot. Continues to commit out, and this is a risky full push here. Oh, they're continuing to push. Still not taken down there. The shot's coming in from that guy, and Vladek a little bit too aggressive trying to get that utility from his downed op opponent. It's down themselves. And it really does look like Pickles are on the offense here, but they are defending. Those two committed early, found a one-for-two trade, and now they have to defend objective 
Oil Dogs for I think the first time in at least this map have the player advantage. Durfin's looking to even the odds though. Minus один. There it is, 3-3. Three, three. Durfin popping up and out has caught one and I'm surprised there was no Again, shots coming in from High I'm Gary on that two-story. Maybe it was because of the threat of Sir Kotal who finds that kill. Shots coming down from Hakai and Kotal finds another. G36C doing some work for them there. Oil Dogs down to the final Gaupko. This is the series in his hands. They must secure this round to continue on here in map two. Otherwise, Pickles... They're going to be starting their season with a very good first two maps. Of course, we'll see that third map as well, but still, this Pickles team coming out and saying, we're new, but we're old. We know what we're doing. <laughs> Definitely a playing coordinated. Durfin really playing well here today as well. The new addition to a old Bursek roster that has formed the Pickles team. Finally, Gecko I being that G36C trying to take those shots, can't quite find the head. And Jelly peeks a different angle to catch Gecko out. Pickles lock in map two, four to zero. And again, a solid performance from Pickles and an unfortunate start for Loyal Dogs, kicking off the series 1 0 with a botched reset. You hate to see it, but again, I am curious where we go for map three. We do always play out all three maps. This should be Loyal Dogs map pick as well. So again, maybe really an opportunity here to secure at least one map in this series. And like I said, lighten the damage to the MMR. Oil Dogs in particular already have a matchmaking rating that was created from the history in past seasons. Pickles, as a new team, have no set MMR, so this is their first game to receive that NMR. If they continue to play like this, they will find themselves up against a tough opponent for their second and third series. And so it'll be kind of fun to track the new Pickles squad duke it out with whoever they get matched up against as they try and lock in their MMR because they are looking pretty strong right now. Very good performance from them. Several caps confirmed and I think we're headed to a custom map based off of the need to reset. Give me a few moments here. I back out of this lobby and try and sort out where we're headed for map number three. Appreciate again everyone tuning in and hanging out for the action. A great start, like I said, to the season. A fun game to tune into. I think we're headed to a custom map. I think I am correct on that. Yeah, it does look like we are headed to USS Quest, one of the few available custom maps uh, after the ban phase here, as we do have both sand 
Uh, and I guess a newer map, Abandoned. The newer DPI map. By the way, we are headed to USS Quest, one of my favorites. It should be a good quick back and forth, to say the least, so. Although, Quest can have some drawn-out maps from time to time. But we'll see. But nonetheless, we are Loyal Dogs starting on offense, as it is their map pick. Pickles over on defense. So they will sort of, you know, if you consider that bulk advantage to be an advantage, have that to go off of and maybe be able to lock in three maps in a row. That's the goal here for this Pickles squad. They want to kick off their start of the season with a nice big W. They want to get all three maps in. And so we'll see. Some cool updates. Seeing to the USS Quest, a few waves in the pool. Not sure who's making them, but they're there. And looking at the rosters, not seeing any subs on the Pickles side. And it looks like uh, Loyal Dogs sticking with their same five as well. So we will be popping in with everyone loose and warmed up for a USS Quest battle. And if it's anything like the start of Subway, we could be in for a much tighter series. I really was expecting this to be a lot closer, but Pickles have managed to secure caps in both games. Uh, no, they didn't get a cap last series, but have secured a cap in the, at, the, at the end of Subway and then just continued to, to win rounds in quarantine. And so I do wonder if Loyal Dogs will be able to reset a little bit here for this third map and try and get one of three. Just patiently waiting to start it off. Again, a shout out to everyone that is hanging out. I always say it, but appreciate everyone that stops by. And it hits that follow button if you haven't already. Please do follow Onward underscore VRML as well as Onward underscore VRML 2 and 3. There are moments in time where we have multiple games live across multiple channels. And so, we'll take a gander there. Another point I see here in chat, you can vote on who you think will win, not just in chat, but also on the VRML.com website. It's a connoisseur vote, and some players really do respect that connoisseur vote. Some people seek for the 100%, ever elusive and impossible to achieve, but there are some good uh, predictors out there. And it's all tracked on the website, so it's kind of cool. But into the USS Quest map we go. Map number three kicks off. Oil Dogs again on offense. Pickles on defense. And Durfin getting aggressive with an early push up onto the red lane. I think they'll tuck in there. Going to be a late surprise for Gauko. Vladek getting aggressive as well. Charging forward here. Oxers... Should hear these footsteps and is ready for them as they drop off to the edge. Good start. Great start for Loyal Dogs. Have the player advantage. And are crashing in through the center where Durfen is not. One of the key elements of this Pickles squad. He's found plenty of kills, but if he's not here to defend, he won't be able to defend. Coil, however, finds a kill. Durfen trades over in red lane. Kain pushes into the corner, gets traded again by Jelly B and Blind Dog. Not alone, but defending alongside Sirkoto, who catches another Almost. kill. I'm Donnie, the final attacker for Loyal Dogs. Pickles looking to snag another round here. Able to grab a, a smoke without being detected there. I don't think Kodal saw that. But the ultimate cross out is the tough part for Donnie here.
And again, just a hush on the battlefield. Kotal Dog just dialed into their corners, not really needing needing to communicate. Donnie peeks out, can't catch the head of Cadell and Pickles up 1-0 on map three. Continue their reign of terror, if you will. Now that's... Yes, eight unanswered points. Royal Dogs have not been able to get on the board since their first score with that successful defense on Subway and the market objective. Since then, it has been Pickles taking rounds, and like I said, Pickles looking to 12-1 and one this series right now. That's their goal, as they do want to come out as strong as possible for the start of this season to be placed as high as possible in that ladder. And again, the ultimate goal is to be top eight worldwide at the end of the season so that you can have a chance at competing for what is a ever-growing prize pool. Always important to remember what's out there to compete for, and you don't normally talk about it until end of season, but for season 12 and all seasons going forward, we'll be hyping up that prize pool all season long, reminding you what everyone's competing for, reminding you why pickles are so locked in right now and are on the hunt for more points. Yeah, Similar sort of attack for Pickles, but utility heavy. Smokes and flashes coming out. That flash deployed to prevent any early aggression. Nades coming soaring through here onto the corners, but nothing up the center. The smoke seeming to deny some important elements of vision as Vladik pushes forward. Oxers, however, flies around the corner and Vladik gets the kill. Here's the steps and is ready for the shot before Oxers is. On the other side, red lane, a battle. Durafin, Jelly trades in the center. Durafin coming crashing through here, trading on the Gauko. Hi, I'm Gary and Donnie, the only two alive, but only one left. For Pickles, Blind Dog, yeah, the uh, only Chista, attacker Chista. available here. Chista. Does get the right on the Durfin, now they're okay. able to. They could be back to Opa, four. Me as if they drop back and get the res, but I don't know if Durfin's gonna pull back to do that. It does seem like that is the plan. Even in this rotation, it is a bit risky. Gary could pick out another. I think they should be able to get up to Codell uncontested. Especially since they're dead on the ledge. Pop back over to Blind Dog, who is closest to objective on this red lane. All up to Donnie and Gary holding on. Gary actually might run into some action as well up through the center. Durfin might be able to get the res onto Jelly. Yeah, Durfin's going to be able to get this res uncontested. All four of Pickles back up. What was a 1v2 gets turned around. Oh, and Gary rotates just in time. Durfin doesn't ID that. Interesting nade toss. Not far enough. Maybe intended for Gary, but... That head peak's still going to be an important element. Peek the corner. Down goes one. Blind dog's there. Donnie comes crashing onto the objective. And it's a kill for Durafen Pickles up 2-0 on map 3.
really, again, coming out here on their season debut, playing very well, very coordinated. Look at the KD feed, four and one there for Durfin so far. And, you know, I do talk a lot about team rosters and team compositions and how, you know, you look at the top tier, it's, it's everybody is capable of carrying a 1v5. But I also find it interesting when some teams sort of center around a particular standout shooter. It's happened before uh, with very good teams. Um, and I am interested to see if we'll see maybe that happen with Pickles over the course of their development. Maybe Durfin will sort of be an element that they play off of. It's a risk reward. If Durfin's always playing well, then that team could always play well. But the moment that that standout player does not exceed, it falls under the team to play, and that's when things can get a little spicy. Not there yet, though. Pickles seem to be comfortable with the roster that they got right now, and they're playing great. 2-0 here on Quest. Good smoke plays come through from them. Very coordinated effort, and they are getting aggressive on defense. Vladic pushing very far up. Oxers finds themselves an easy kill. Blind dog catching out. Oxers there. A nice pickup and a clean one at that. Oh, speaking of clean, Gary. One shot, one kill. Down goes Jelly. Flies out, looks for another, and trades with Durfin up to the center. A key shooter down for the likes of Pickles does make it a bit easier for Loyal Dogs, as I mentioned. We'll see if that is actually the case. Blind Dog and Codel both playing well here. Codel actually 3-0. and Blind Dog 2-0. and So, still playing good in the round. But both are here, and Blind Dog is holding a very quick and short angle. Almost misses Gauko. Down they go. Hakain checks tablet, realizes that there's an enemy there. Almost looks like they weren't expecting a second. Kodal has to react off of this news and return to turn back to that corner. see Kodo has eyes on OBJ that's their defensive position that they're holding they're gonna wait for a kind to try and eventually crash around to ob objective but there's three and a half minutes left in this round Just as the cross happens, Codell misses that small slice. Akine posed to secure a round after what has been nine unanswered points coming through from the likes of Pickles. My gosh, and another just miss. Yep, there Kodal finally catches the ankle bones of a kind. How many near misses can you have? The lasers always make it a little bit exciting, but the kill comes through. Pickles 3 and 0, oh, 10 unanswered points now from them.
if you do the math. And they are on track for the 12-1 victory that they are looking for. Yeah, again, I see a, a lot of great chat going on in chat. We really love to see it. Talking about the action, the squads. Shout out to everyone that is tuning in. Lipinski, Tea Party, BMG Lamode, Guided, Grenade Magnet VR. Who else has been chatting it up in here? Button UK, Nine Phenom, Identity Crisis. Thank you all for hanging out and chatting it up. And shout out to you. What could be the final round for Pickles kicks off as we get into the action. Round number four of map three. Jelly getting aggressive up to the center. And oh no, in the chaos, a team kill. Not sure what happened there, but a quick revive turns it back to five. Blind Dog on red lane catches one. Durafen catches out a kind. Dog's getting picked apart a bit here as another kill from Vladik comes through. It's all up to Gary. in the series 4-0 off of the end of map three a stellar performance from this new pickles team we rebranded Bursek with the addition of Durafin clearly a key addition as Durafin went six and two in that third map had a positive and high KD ratio every map definitely the MVP I would say for the Pickles squad, but Pickles as a whole also played very well. Very coordinated, active comms, good rebounds from tough from tough starts, and uh, just made it tough for Loyal Dogs to get any momentum going. Loyal Dogs started strong, having, having that uh, tie game 1-1. Uh, definitely thought we were going to be in for a bit more of a back and forth, and it looked that way until the cap came through, and so it's all about momentum, and Pickles definitely ran with it here today. And again, a shout out to everyone that has been hanging out here today. Appreciate you all. But that will be the end of our first match of season 12. A quick shout out to the sponsors again that we have confirmed. Pro2 VR, VRML, and HyperX. Keep an eye out for that prize pool to expand. And we will continue to add more sponsors throughout the course of this season. Sponsors you're familiar with and new sponsors as well big ones that we got to pay attention to with that i will be signing off that is it for me here today my name has been nightfire with two east thank you so much for tuning in i will catch you all probably later this week with more vrml action so be sure to follow and be sure to come back in just a few days until then stay classy